Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and in this short video, I'm going to walk you through what it looks like to put together a deliverable package uh, for a survey work product. And although this is a little bit specific to the company I'm currently working at as my full-time day job, which is at BKF Engineers, uh, it applies to a lot of other uh, similar organizations, something similar. So although the details might change a little bit, the the basic concepts are the same. So one of the things I'm trying to teach my team is that you know it doesn't do any good to get to the get the football down to the one yard line. Uh, you got to get the football into the end zone and and a lot of times as a team we we struggle to get the ball all the way to the to the one yard line and then we just we don't go that last yard and get it into the end zone. So part of that is putting together the deliverable package that goes to the client. And so I, I want to give you some tips, show you how I do that and, and just give you some tips for how it can be done and like I said, the, the, the details, uh, some of the details like the file naming and the folder structure might change a little bit depending on your organization, but uh, a lot of the principle, basic principles here will, will stay the same. So I'm going to pull this over, this file explorer over on the screen so you can see it. So what I have set up here is I've got a, a project folder that I've dummied up here. This is the name of the project, Artisan Crossing. And then usually somewhere in that folder structure of the project, you'll have a folder for communications or files in or files out, something like that. So I've just called this communications folder. So at, at BKF, this would actually be our SUR, S-U-R for survey, our SUR out folder. Uh, but I've in this example, I've called it communications. And then in my communications folder, I have an out and an in. So this is stuff that comes in from clients or business partners or agencies. And this is stuff that goes out to clients or business partners and agencies. So I'm going to open the out folder. And then what you will typically see in here uh, at, at an organization like BKF is a list of folders in chronological order of either items received or in this case, because we're in the out folder, items sent. And because this is just a uh, contrived example, a dummy example, just a facade folder structure, we only have one folder here. But we can start our instruction on how to prepare the deliverable package uh, with this folder. So once you're in the appropriate folder, communications out in this example, the very first step to creating a deliverable is to create a folder. And the way I like to name these and the way I want my team to name them is the date first and then what we're delivering. Okay, and I'm actually going to rename this because I forgot a very important part. And then what I like to put on the end is just who it's going to. So this is going to be two county surveyor. And if you can consistently follow this folder naming convention here, date, what is it and who it's going to, it makes it really easy when you've got a stack of 39 folders, <laughs> for example, or 59 folders or 199 folders to come in here and kind of see chronologically what's gone to the client or to look for a specific deliverable to the client. And that's one reason why uh, I've learned to store deliverables in this manner in a single folder. So everything that gets, every work product, whether it's preliminary or final, that goes outside of the organization goes in a folder here so we have a record of exactly what was sent and although I sometimes break this rule because of, of bad habits uh, once a, once something goes in this folder in the communications out it doesn't get modified what we want to preserve here is a record of what was sent to the client so you don't want to go in there for example and change a drawing because we want to store an exact copy of the drawing that was sent to the client on that date Okay, so that's the naming convention for the folder. So just as an example, let's say today is the 21st. We had another deliverable. So let's just say in this case, we had a revision of the final parcel map that went to the City Public Works. So in this case, I might say something like, Final parcel map, revision to Belmont Public Works. 
And as a general rule, I don't put names here. This is usually organizations. The two is, is an organization or maybe a job title, but I don't usually put first and last names uh, because most people that come into this folder aren't going to know who the county surveyor is. But uh, if I said Fred Smith, they're not, they might not know he's the county surveyor. So that's why I just say to the county surveyor. All right, so we're going to delete that folder. It was just an example. All right, so we've created our folder now. What goes in there? Now, the contents are going to change depending on, depending on the project. The contents are going to change. Um, but as a general rule, there's a couple things I like to see when I get into this folder. Um, at the top and so I like to see a transmittal letter which we don't have here and I like to see a copy of the email message that notified the client that they could get their deliverable now sometimes that this deliverable is attached to an email but a lot of times in the survey world our deliverables are too big for email usually there's a 10 megabyte limit on on a lot of email servers and so that e the delivery email will have a download link and I can actually show you an example of that. So let me pull open my email here. And I'm going to come to my send items. And let me find this. Went to John May. He's the county surveyor. Okay, so here's the email that I sent to John May. And you can see it's got the transmittal letter on it, which I did not have. So we're going to save that. And I'm going to show you guys in a minute. We're going to talk about that transmittal letter and what goes in it. That might actually be in a different video, but uh, we will cover that. All right, and then I like to also save a copy of that message. So, and I'm not sure if I can do that in the web interface for Outlook. We're about to find out. Yeah, I don't think it's going to let me do that. I was hoping it would. We can certainly print it though, huh? <laughs> we'll do that real quick. All right, I'm not going to be able to, to save a copy of this email through my web interface, but at any rate, uh, you can see the email here to John, the county surveyor, and because the attachments are too big, I just give them the download link, and then they, I, I attach the transmittal letter. Okay, so, oh, it is going to let me print it. All right, let's go ahead and do that real quick. And as I mentioned, we'll we'll talk about the transmittal letter in a little bit, and I'll and I'll show you what one looks like and what should go in it. All right, so let's let me save a copy of this email. That sorry, I apologize. The print dialog was hiding behind one of my other windows. And then I just try and name this something logical. So I'm just going to call it email message. Okay, so what you're going to see now is we have the, uh, we now have the transmittal letter here. And then in a, in a minute, we'll have that message, the email message that actually went to the client. And uh, it's a good idea to save that as a PDF, uh, but a lot of times I just drag it right out of Outlook as an MSG file, uh, and that's fine too. Okay, so you should always have those two things in the top. You should have your transmittal letter and your email message. Um, as a general rule, I like everything that is an official work product that goes to the client to have a transmittal letter, especially if it's a public agency. Uh, that doesn't 
I'm not going to tell you I always do that, but I try and do that. Um, I just think it's professional. Uh, it's a professional courtesy. I always send responses to public agencies, submittals to public agencies with a transmittal letter. But even when you're dealing with an architect or an engineer or a business partner, it's it's good to do that. And then the, the rest of the contents of this folder are going to depend on the deliverable. Now, in this particular case, I'm sending some annexation documents uh, to the county surveyor. So these are in California. These are what we call LAFCO annexation docs. LAFCO is the Local Agency Formation Commission. And these are plats and legals and closure reports for the, the land that's being annexed. And then the supporting docs. Okay, so what I'll do is uh, let me just go in and show you. So the first thing to notice is all of these folders are named consistently. So these are all regular title case. So first letter capitalized with spaces as the white space, except for this one here that has a dash in between on site. Um, so they're all named consistently. Uh, you can see annexation at the end of the four annexations. So there's four parcels being annexed. Okay, and this has the supporting documents. Um, and so this looks nice and neat, and it's well organized. You notice I didn't just dump all four uh, sets of annexation documents in one root folder. I, I put them in subfolders. So the, the idea is to make this professional and easy to use for whoever's receiving the work product. And then you'll notice here, if we just open the first annexation folder, you will also notice everything is named consistently in the files. So date first, year, month, day, it's all caps with white space. That's how I name my files. So my files and folders are a little bit different. And these things are all named the same. They name consistently, right? O'Neill Annexation, O'Neill Avenue Annexation South, Plat 2, Plat 1, Geographic Description Closure. They stack nice. They look nice. They're consistent. Okay, and then if you open the second folder, man, same thing. Same file naming convention, right? So we're going for consistency here. And I, you know, yeah, man, this looks really nice. So we, this just shows we've taken some time to try and do a professional job. Okay, same thing down here. Right, now I'll, I'll point out here that the, the, the exact details of your file naming convention or your folder naming convention don't really matter as long as they're consistent. So you could put your folders in all caps sep separated by dashes if you want. And as long as you do that consistently, it's going to look nice. What you don't want is a mix of file, file or folder naming styles. Um, so everything's uh, consistent lines up. So I would say by the time I got everything copied in here, set up, and renamed properly, you know, it was about an hour. It took me about an hour to put all this together. Um, if you name your files correctly in the beginning, then you don't have that problem when you copy them over. They're already named properly. Uh, you can see here, this is the supporting docs for the um, annexations. You can see, again, the same file naming convention we're using here. I don't have the date in front of these because these aren't documents we produce. These are recorded documents or maps. Um, so it doesn't make sense to have a, have a date, current date in front of them, but they're named consistently. You can see the deeds named consistently here. The two different ordinances that created these annexation, historic annexations, named consistently. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do uh, now, where this video is going to go a little long, but let's talk about what goes in a transmittal letter. So let's go ahead and open this, and we will see. All right. So here's the transmittal letter. You know, obviously your letterhead uh, may look a little different. You know, your font may look a little different. Uh, but what I'm trying to do here is just give an introduction to the work product that's being delivered. I'm just trying to introduce that work product to whoever is receiving it and let them know what is this, why are you getting it, and what do you need to know about it. So those are kind of the three important questions your transmittal letter needs to know. Uh, needs to. Uh, those are the three things your transmittal letter needs to communicate. What is being delivered? Why is it being delivered? And what do you need to know about the thing or things that are being delivered? So let's just read through this real quick. So Mr. May is the county surveyor. Uh, we've attached our resubmittal. So this is the second submittal. And sometimes I just say that. We've attached our second submittal of the LAFCO Annexation Geographic Description Packages for the Otterson Crossing Project in Belmont. Now Mr. May knows exactly what is being delivered. 
We've received your comments and would like to thank you for taking the time to review our last submittal. I always like to thank the reviewing agency for their review, even if I don't like them or agree with their comments. Uh, that's just a nice professional courtesy. And then uh, I like to include a section that says, hey, here's what I changed. Sometimes I, I make changes uh, that address all of the review comments. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I only address some of them. And so I want to especially make sure if there are comments I have not addressed um, or, or changes I did not make uh, because maybe I disagree with the reviewer. Sometimes that happens. You want to make sure you point that out here. So uh, I let them know. Now, this, this was a, an extensive set of revisions that we made because we switched county surveyors in the middle of this review process. So this is actually the first time Mr. May is looking at these documents. So there was a lot of red lines. So I just said we made a, a num uh, numerous revisions to address your review comments. And I just let them know, hey, a lot of what you asked for, we put back in after the other guy made us take it out, <laughs> uh, which happens sometimes. And then uh, this is an important section too. This, this section right here, I always like to tell the recipient uh, what's in the deliverable that you're receiving. So I said, we have included the following items uh, for this resubmittal, and then I give a list. Geographic description packages for the following annexations. I list them out. There's four. And your supporting documents. What does that include? And then I tell them what, what's in the supporting documents folder. I also let them know each geographic description includes these following items. So of the four geogra geographic descriptions here, they each contain three documents, a written description, a plat, and a closure report. Now, right here, I'm letting them know, here's some important information you need to know about this work product. Okay, so right here, number one, I say I've left in my intent paragraphs at the close of each written description. I'd prefer to leave these in the documents, even though we have put back in the controlling calls. I will remove the, remove the notes if you strongly object to them. So he asked me to take these notes out. Uh, it's my seal and signature going on the documents. I would prefer to leave those notes in. Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to die on that mountain. Uh, if he really, really wants me to take them out, I will. Uh, but what I'm basically doing is saying, hey, I'd prefer to leave them in if it's not going to cause you major heartburn. Uh, I'd like to do that. If he tells me to pull them out, I will. And then I said, hey, we've added some of the information that you asked for here, but on these two annexations that are off-site that weren't part of our survey, some of that information wasn't added because I don't have it. So I'm just letting him know that. So I'm kind of covering here what I did not do that he asked me to do, and I'm giving him the reason why, okay? So I'm not flipping the guy the middle finger here. I'm just explaining, uh, here's why I didn't make the changes you asked for, and him and I may have some back and forth on this, and that's okay. Now, I give him this little caveat here in my conclusion. I say, hey, given the extent of your comments and the fact that we are restarting the review process with another county surveyor, I anticipate that my team will be making at least one more submittal of the documents before you and I are mutually satisfied with the result. So I'm just letting this guy know, hey, I understand we're going to have another round of red lines here. Uh, he put a lot of blood on this last submittal, and the chances that we caught exactly everything he wanted or that he didn't miss something in his own review uh, for, some, for a submittal that, that is as large as this one is pretty small. So I'm just letting him know, hey, I understand. I'm going to have another submittal, a third, um, and that's okay. I'm just letting him know. I get it. Um, and then I let him know, hey, I've worked with this guy in the past, so even though this is the first time he's seeing this product on this project in this role, John and I have worked together in the past. Say, hey, I've enjoyed working with you. Man, you got any questions? Call me. Here's my cell phone number. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want this to get nitpicky or pissy. <laughs> you know, if he's got some heartburn with something I've, I've done or... Uh, has a question about the way I've done things, he's welcome to just call me. Not everybody will always take you up on that, but some guys will. And then I just say, hey, I, I understand I've got some hard work here to get you a product that, that you feel meets the needs of the county, and I'm, and I'm committed to doing that. And then I give them my signature and my uh, contact info. Okay, so this is a good example, I hope, of what a transmittal letter should look like. So again, the three questions we're trying to answer. What's being delivered? Why is it being delivered? And what do you need to know about the deliverable? Okay, And specifically, if you're dealing with a public agency that's doing review, or even a business partner or a client that's doing review, you know what changes have you made and what changes have you not made and what are the reasons for that? Okay. Oh, and what's in the package? You want to make sure you tell them that too. 
All right, guys, I'm at 20 minutes. That's about double my normal length uh, for one of these videos, but I hope that's helpful, and I hope this video helps uh, my team understand uh, what I'm looking for when I'm putting together a deliverable package uh, in the outfolder. The nice thing about this now is it's fairly simple to come in here now, and uh, if you had to resend this or, or if you're sending it the first time, everything's here, right? So what I tell my techs is, Get me a deliverable folder with everything that needs to go to the client, and this is what I'm talking about. This is what I want to see. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope it's helpful. And uh, we'll catch you again on another video soon.